Good evening, everyone. Good evening. On behalf of all of us here at St. Elizabeth and Seton, we would like to welcome you, and of course, any guests or visitors that are joining us today. And speaking of guests and visitors, would you please raise your hand if this is your first time back or visiting from another parish? Welcome. We're very happy to have you. And now please join me in singing a couple of our um, Christmas hymns. We will start with, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Sounding great up there. <laughs> I hope throughout the whole mass you'll sound just like that. <laughs> also, before we begin today's celebration of the Eucharist, we ask that you please make sure your cell phones are either turned off or silenced so as to avoid any unnecessary distractions during our worship. 
And now here's a little uh, video from Father Jim. Hi everybody, we gather together to celebrate the birth of Christ on this Christmas day. So very happy that all of you are here with us, especially our friends and visitors who are with us as well. I ask you all to please make sure that you take a copy of the bulletin home with you today in my letter. I kind of show a little bit of gratitude for all of us who are here at St. Elizabeth and especially gratitude for all of you who joined us for this celebration today, our visitors and friends. So read my letter there. And also in this coming year, um, um, we are going to be doing listening sessions for this project that the Pope has called the church to kind of renew itself and to bring ourselves into journeying together as a whole church. And so inside your bulletin, there is a little flyer here. And in the flyer there, it tells about how you can participate in this process for the whole universal church. With the Second Vatican Council, the church has been defined as the people of God. And now with the synod on synodality that the Pope is calling for 2023, he's calling us all then, the people of God, to give our input and where is the spirit moving us today and into our future. So we have our listening sessions that are, are listed on the, on the flyer that uh, you can participate in. And there's also the last one there's, do, do one of the four here, depending upon if the general parish listening session, those for um, youth listening session, for young adults listening session, and then an online survey. So if you fit into one of those four categories and, and, and help us to hear the voices, we're especially want to hear of those who have some difficulties with the church or have left the church and uh, we'd like to know what the church can do and in order to help bring people back to the practice of the faith as the spirit moves us all so we're looking for everybody's voice here is very very important as we journey together on this toward this synod on synodality so please uh, take the opportunity to look at that flyer in the bulletin and participate in one way that you can, not only parishioners, but our visitors, and even those who may have uh, who may have strayed from the faith or left the faith. We'd like to hear from you as well. Everyone's voice is important. So continue to uh, look at that and see what you can do in order to help us move forward as a faith community. And now let's move on to our rest of the announcements with a special message from Bishop Pepe for all of us as well. I'd like to wish all of you a blessed Holy Christmas and certainly a prosperous New Year. I miss you all and uh, it uh, has made me uh, realize the power of prayer from each one of you. I've received so many cards. I've been told about uh, your commitment to me as a bishop and as a priest. I'm most grateful because this Christmas I am able to walk again. Talk of mishap and operation and the unexpected happened to me. I was fine walking out of a hospital. 10 minutes later, I was intubated. <laughs> I had to go through a period of uh, rehabilitation. But things are working, working well. I'm uh, really blessed by the tremendous amount of prayer. And so I really sense the true body of Christ, the light of the world in my heart, in your heart as I share this Christmas time with you and Christmas celebration. I hope that the Lord will bring consolation in your life. I hope that he will bring you a sense of Jesus' peace in a very personal, intimate way. And the warmth of his joy may touch you and your families during this period. God bless and God love you. And just a reminder that on Saturday, December 25th, there will be no 4 p.m. Vigil Mass for Sunday, December 26th. Only Christmas Masses will be celebrated on Christmas Day at 6 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and the final Mass of the day at 12 noon. The church will close after the noon Mass. Our regular Sunday Mass schedule and gift shop hours will be in effect on December 26th. See the bulletin or visit our website for the complete list of our adjusted holiday hours and mass times for December 27th through January 1st. And on behalf of Father Jim, Father Joe, Father Tom, and the whole C's staff, 
We wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Our presider for this celebration is Father Joe. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We have gathered to celebrate the Nativity of Jesus, the one who is God with us. Let us pause to prepare our hearts to welcome him by bringing to God all the places in our lives in need of his healing and mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. people who know 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John hailed it as coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Jerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashon. And Nashon, the father of Shaman. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David, the king. 
David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Zeruiah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph, Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, Joram the father of Uzziah, Uzziah the became the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Jehekiah, Jehekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah, Josiah became the father of Je Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel the father of Jerubabel, Jerubabel the father of Abiud, Abiud became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Jadok, Jadok became the father of Akim, Akim the father of Eliud, Eliud the father of Eliezer, Eliezer became the father of Mathan, Mathan the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I would like to welcome all of you, our parishioners and visitors um, from near and afar, and those who maybe 
come to visit us the first time, and we would like to make you feel like home because God dwells among us. He makes his home among us. And so that is why it is important that you feel like home here. And no other word so completely captures the Christmas spirit as the word uh, joy. Imagine the joy of the parent welcoming their child into the world. No more waiting. The joy describes so many of the feelings of, of Christmas. The joy is when children see their presence, when relatives and friends arrive at their friends to visit, you know, when grandmother announced that you know, dinner is ready to be served, and when you know, the choirs sing at the liturgy celebration. But underlying this joy is the confidence that God has indeed dwelt among us. God is with us. Not only did God enter the human history, but also he has entered our own personal lives. The birth of Jesus provided for us that joy. But we also acknowledge the reality that for some at Christmas, joy is absent. Some, for some, for those who get stuck at the airports due to flight cancellations, for some, you know, due to stress, to work, etc. Thus, it is, this holiday is a hollow day instead of a holiday. And so, but it is precisely at this point that the birth of Jesus Christ has the most to say in their lives. We celebrate Christmas because we believe that people can be free from the mediocre of, of life and the emptiness of life. The birth of Jesus provides the joy of abundant living. Like in the words of St. John, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. First, we hear in today's gospel the long genealogy of Jesus. It includes many names, and most of them are unfamiliar with us. But it shows us of the community of God, those who gone before us, shows that, like us, none of them is, is perfect. You know the names we hear in the genealogy? They, they have their limitations. They have their, you know, they're not perfect like us. And yet, you see, God still call them to cooperate. And they respond. The name we hear like mm. Solomon, mm. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Mm. And we hear the name of, of Ruth, a stranger uh, to the Israelite, to the Jews. To them, Ruth was an outsider. But her mother-in-law welcomed her into her home, make her feel at home. And we see how God's grace worked through that. And then Ruth became the, um, 
the great, great, you know, um, grandmother, of, the great, great, great grandmother of Jesus. So through this gene genealogy, you know, we, we see that God's working in each one of us. You know, just like if we read, if you read the message from Father Jim in the bulletin, he say that, you know, all of us here, the, is, you know, trying to welcome all of you here. And, and knowing that we are not perfect here, we are still sinners in the making, sinners, you know, and we have limitations. We do not have all the answers. And yet, indeed, we are still called to help us recognize that God's abiding love is present to help us to journey together. And that's what the genealogy show us. With God's grace, they journey together to fulfill God's promise. The joy that we, see, the first joy that we see is, is the joy in the name of Jesus. Jesus means God saves. Joseph hear the news that Mary is, you know, is pregnant, and that, that news had brought him many responses, but none of them could be described as joy. He was deeply disturbed. He loved Mary and was betrothed to Mary, to marry her, and so Joseph planned to divorce her quietly. But while Joseph was still considering what he should do, God sent an angel to explain Mary's situation. Joseph must have received the announcement with joy. What a relief it had been to know that Mary was still an honorable and godly person. And you know what Joseph did after receiving that news? He welcomes Mary into his home. That is important. Without that welcoming, there would be no joy, no reason for us to, to celebrate Christmas. That is why I say at the beginning that it's important that you feel welcome here in God's uh, place. And in addition you know, to the name of Jesus, God saves. He gives us joy because Jesus did save us from our sins and from the penalty of our sins our failures, our mistakes, our sins will not be held against us forever because Jesus had taken that upon himself and paid that debt. And that gave us joy, knowing, knowing that he has come to save us. And the second reason for joy is also in the name. It is Emmanuel. God is with us. Before, in the Old Testament, you know, the prophet says that God is by our side. God does not abandon us. But now, he's not only by our side, but he is with us. He dwelt among us. God is with us. God is not just on our side, but he, he wants to live in us. And we continuously seek happiness. We continuously seek joy. And many achieve that satisfaction through the temporary lift to overcome stress, but joy that is permanent and eternal is found only in the person of 
Jesus Christ. God has come to live among us and to save us from our sins. Do you have that joy in your life, that joy of Christ in your life? You can by committing yourself anew again to the one whose name is Jesus. God saves. God is with us. Please stand, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to church living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God, you became human in the incarnation and know the needs of your people. Hear us now as we offer our prayers and petitions. That today's celebration of the incarnation may inspire the church to see God in all people, regardless of nationality, race, religion, sexuality, or sexual orientation. leaders may work tirelessly to uphold human dignity in all forms from conception through final breath. here today may use our gifts for the service of others following the example Jesus gives us. especially those with the coronavirus and their caregivers, for members of the military and their loved ones, for all essential workers, for vocations to all church ministries, for the intentions in our parish chest of prayers, and for all the personal mass intentions we bring before the Lord in the quiet of our hearts.
Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayers this day as we stand in gratitude for the gifts of the Incarnation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the word make flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him, God make visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, and Gregory, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer each other a verbal greeting of peace. the reception of Holy Communion, please follow the directions of our hospitality ministers. As a reminder to our guests and visitors, the church directs that our sign of reverence before receiving Holy Communion is a simple bow of the head and that we receive the Eucharist while standing. Please remove any gloves and please I leave your mask on while you say amen. Then move to the red marks on the floor and there remove your mask, consume the Holy Eucharist, replace your mask, and immediately proceed back to your pew without any additional bows, gestures, or pauses, which can disrupt our communion procession. Please observe the required social distancing guidelines at all times out of continued respect and concern for everyone's health and safety, 
we ask that the Holy Eucharist be received reverently in the hand. And for those who may not wish to receive communion today, or for those who may not be of our Catholic faith, we invite you uh, to come forward and share a blessing of fellowship with us. To indicate that preference, please cross your arms in this fashion, and we will share these blessings uh, with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. After the final blessing, please uh, remain in your places until the presider ex exited the worship space. Then uh, please maintain social distancing as you proceed to the exit of your choice. And please make sure to take with you any bulletins or all the items which need to be disposed of. And for those uh, taking communion to the homebound, please come forward.
May the Lord send his angel to watch over and guide you as you minister his sacred presence to those unable to be with us today. Please ask them to remember us in prayer as well. And may our loving God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.